Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and in today's photography tutorial, we are going to take a look at split toning, explaining how to use split toning, what it does, what all those little faders mean, everything in depth, and some tricks to really getting the very best out of your images, whether you're using Lightroom, Capture One, Adobe Camera Raw, doesn't matter. You ready? Let's do it. Alright, let's jump into it together. Open up the split toning panel inside of Lightroom or whatever photo editor you're working. As I mentioned, it doesn't matter if you're using Lightroom, Capture One, Adobe Camera Raw, Luminar, it's all going to be the same. Pretty much every program that edits photos has some form of split toning and most of the time the controls are labeled almost exactly the same. So what is split toning? It's the ability to add two different tones to our images. One tone in the highlights, so a tone is just a color, and another in the shadows. So for example, in this photo, we are adding some kind of orangey yellows to our highlights and some yellowish orange greens to our shadows. Let me show you without split toning and with. So you can see we're adding this kind of warm, moody, vintage vibe through our split toning. It's a very powerful effect and it's really easy to use. But <laughs> it can be kind of hard to understand when you're first starting out. So let me explain exactly what's going on here by hopping over to this gradient right here. We'll just reset this. So you can see we have white on this side and black on this side. We've got our shadows. We've got our highlights. So we'll start with our highlights. I'm going to grab a color. Let's go with, say, a nice blue. And I'm going to take my saturation up. And as I take that saturation up, you can see I'm adding more and more of this color to the highlights in this image. Now, why isn't it affecting this far left part? Well, because this far left of the gradient is pure white. So pure white doesn't have any color. Therefore, your highlights are only going to affect the bright highlights of the image, but not the absolute white. The same thing goes for our shadows. So we'll grab a color. That's what the hue stands for. And then we're going to grab our saturation, bring that up. And you'll see the same exact thing. We're affecting this area of the image, which is the shadows up to the midtones. But the blacks in the image are still going to stay black. So that's the basics of how we select our different colors. And of course, we can select two different colors, one for our highlights and one for our shadows. So in this case, we're adding some purplish blue in the highlights and some oranges in the shadows. Now, really, to get a handle on this, we need to understand what balance means. And balance is the ability to kind of shift how heavy our highlights to shadow ratio is going. And you can see as I do that, it's almost like we have an invisible hand and it's just swiping left and right. In this instance, we're taking mostly shadows in this split toning and only a little bit of our highlights is being affected by this blue color. Most of it's the shadow color. And if we take the balance slider to the other direction, exact different opposite story. We've got mostly highlights being affected here with a little bit of oranges in the deepest of the shadows. Now this actually gives us some different techniques and tools that we can use split toning for. So without further ado, let's hop over into some actual images and kind of show you what I mean. So for example, let's hop over to this image with a nice bright sky in front of us. Now, typical split toning is going to just use it stylistically. You can add some color, whatever you want to your image. So for example, let's maybe go with this orange color for our highlights. Just click on this, grab a nice orange. And then for our shadows, let's go with a complementary color, which would be kind of the opposite end of the color spectrum, say a blue or a teal that kind of movie blockbuster look, right? Now this isn't a perfect example because we're not dialed in here, but just roll with me for a second. Let's say this was your normal stylish use of the split toning. It's still powerful and you can do some neat effects, but really what's quite cool and a trick that most people don't know about split toning is you can turn the saturation of one of these all the way off and then you can use this balance tool as a mask to selectively add color to only the highlights, like the very brightest parts of your highlights in the image, or only the shadows. So let me show you exactly what I mean. This sky is pretty bright, and I'd like it to be a little bit more blue. However, if my balance is set at 50, and I grab my highlights and set that to a nice blue color, and let's say that, you can see we're adding blue to the entire image. Maybe not to the shadows, but to the skin, to the sand, to these rocks. It's not so good. I just want to add it to the sky. Well, if I take my balance slider, and I grab it, and I take it all the way to the left, you're going to notice something really interesting. Now when I shut my split toning on and off, you can see I'm still adding blue to the sky, but only to the very brightest parts of this image, the very highest of the highlights. So I take this all the way up, and now I can add some nice blue or whatever color I want to the sky. So maybe I want it pink because it's almost sunset. Take that balance all the way over, and then lower my saturation so that it's not too, too extreme. And we've added a nice pink 
to our sky and the brightest parts of our highlights without really affecting the sand or these rocks the way that we did when the balance was set further up. Now we can do the opposite, obviously, and we can add a tint to our entire image by just taking the balance all the way to 100, or we can do different color schemes for an effect. We've got our sunset. Maybe let's add some blue to our shadows here. And then we're going to add some pink to our sunset, just to make that sunset even more sunsetty, right? And then we can play with our shadows and just see what works the best. Maybe we could go with a kind of analog color palette. So just one sort of main predominant color. You can see the difference in that sunset photo from one simple tweak. And now we can take our saturation back a little bit so we're not overkilling it. And this is great. However, if you want to get really complex in your color themes and figure out, okay, what colors look good together, head over to color.adobe.com and they will actually give you different suggestions. So we can go and find different types of color schemes. And then you can adjust these sliders and it will automatically give you complementary colors based on what you've selected. So this is a super handy tool. We can go in here to a complementary color scheme, which is going to be two colors at opposite ends of our color wheel. We can just drag these around and get different sample colors. Another really handy part of this tool is to actually use the extract theme function. So we head over to extract theme and then we can grab a photo that we love the grade of. So for example, this one right here looks amazing. We'll grab a screenshot of that photo, head over and upload that shot. And once you upload it, this is what comes up. It automatically generates a color palette for us, which is really, really handy. Now we can take those colors. So let's say I love this blue right here in the water. And I love this orange of his skin for skin tones. And then I'm going to grab this window, open it up like that. Head back over into Lightroom here. And I can use those colors in my split toning. So I'll grab my split toning panel, select the highlights first. And here's a little trick. You can manually select these points and try and just match it up to the colors that you want. Or you can click once and drag off the screen if you're using Lightroom and drag onto the color that you want to sample. So there we go. There is our highlight color. We're going to do the same thing with our shadows. Grab that shadow, click and drag off onto this shadow color. Perfect. Now this looks absolutely horrible, but that's okay because we're going to dial this back. So we'll grab our saturation, bring that back down, grab our saturation in the shadows. Now you can see here's before and after. We've added kind of a nice tone to our image. And we could, of course, use the balance to add more shadows and maybe even just do the shadow color if we really want to just the green shadows. Or we can do the opposite, put the balance up, and then we'll just be affecting the highlight color into the image. So something like that. Maybe bring this color sample off somewhere else on this image. And you can see how quick and easy it is to really dial in a look before, after. Now, hopefully you're starting to get a grasp on how split toning works and the different ways you can apply it. A couple of tips I want to give you because um, when it comes to using split toning, it can be really frustrating. You can see somebody do it on the internet and then you try yourself and it's like, why isn't this working? Why does this look like garbage? The first possible reason it's not working for you is you're just trying to add too much color to your image. Some images really don't benefit from split toning. They just fight you. And probably if that's happening, it's because you're just trying to overdo it for that image. Certain images, you can add more color than others. So for example, this sunset one that we did together, I can add a ton of color to this image and we can really get away with that without it looking necessarily overdone compared to this image right here. If I did the same amount of split toning, we'll copy it right over here, copy and paste. You're going to see it looks absolutely horrible. I mean, it looks not as bad as I expected, but it certainly doesn't look good. So make sure you're dialing things back and not trying to add too much color in the split toning section. If you find you're just not getting the look you're going for, it's not adding enough so sometimes what happens is you add more and more and more and it just looks worse. It doesn't necessarily add more color. Try adding it in the tone curve or the calibration panel. So let me show you really quickly what I mean. Let's say that we want to add an overall kind of orange tone to our image. So we'll set both of these colors to sort of a warm orange. Here's before and after. So it's subtle. We don't want to push it too, too far because then it will just look maybe a little ridiculous. Set that a little bit more towards yellow. Okay, so here's before and here's after. But let's say I want more of a tint to my image without it looking over-edited. Let me just expand this. 
The easiest way to do that is to go over to our Tone Curve panel. And if you don't really have a grasp on the Tone Curve, uh, just make sure you watch the tutorial I did earlier on my YouTube channel. It'll definitely help you have a basic understanding of what's going on when I adjust these things. But if we want to add more warmth, all we have to do is just take the very darkest part of the red, the black point of the red channel. We're going to grab it and drag it up just a little bit. So here's before and here's after. So we've warmed up the image even more without necessarily making it look as extreme as when we try and do it all in split toning. The biggest thing I've come across in Lightroom is the biggest thing. One of the big tricks I've come across is you don't want to make all of your changes in one effect. So for example, we can take our contrast, take that all the way up to 100 and it looks terrible. And sometimes you just can't add enough pop to your image and adding contrast just makes it look bad, not more kind of poppy. Well, we can add a little bit of contrast in the contrast section, a little bit of contrast in the tone curve, a little bit of contrast elsewhere, and slowly we'll build up that image and you'll get better results. So the same thing goes for, t for uh, split toning. You want to add a little bit of color at a time. Use the tone curve if you need to. So we're going to try and add maybe a little bit of green too. That'll kind of red and green make sort of a yellowish color. Here's before and after. And we could take out a little bit of blue which is the same thing as adding in red and green. You can see we can go crazy if you really want to see what's going on. Now you can really see what's happening to the shadows of our image. We're adding our greens and our reds and we're taking out the blues which gives us a yellow tint. So that's another way to add split toning to your images. And in the same way we could add split toning by adding some blue to the highlights and taking some green out of the highlights. So we're split toning. We're doing the kind of opposite colors and introducing two tones into our image. And this can be really, really powerful and helpful. You always want to work with the colors that are naturally present in the image. So for example, there are pastel edits that are getting really popular now where you kind of try and desaturate any of the colors that aren't right next to each other on the color wheel. So to give you an example of what that looks like, let's head over here to color wheel and show you an analogous color theme. So in this image, for example, we've got some pinks, we've got some uh, orange and some beige, but we've got this blue shirt and these blue waves, and that's not part of this palette. So I would want to take the blues out of here. So I go into our HSL, saturation, and take the saturation down in the blues, and maybe take our hue in the blues over towards aqua, which will make it closer in color. And now we've got a slightly more analogous color palette. So I know we're getting off topic here with the split toning, but it all kind of factors in together. The key is you don't want to use any of these panels by themselves. You want to use little bits of each. Little tiny incremental improvements to your image is going to give you the best possible results. That goes for split toning, that goes for everything else as well. We can even go a little step further, add some pink to our shadows in our calibration, take our reds maybe towards red a little bit, our greens take the saturation slightly down, and blues take those again towards this kind of tealy color. So here's before and here's after. We've added a ton of extra color to our image just using the tone curve, split toning, calibration little by little by little. The split toning helps a lot but you don't want to overdo it and try and do everything in split toning because your results just won't look as good as if you tried to do it a little bit here, a little bit there until you get a great final image. And remember, the best way to learn split toning is actually just to open up Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever it is you're using and practice it for yourself. Now, if you want to practice on this image, I'll actually make this available as a free download for you so you can grab it and even rewatch this tutorial and just follow along, see if you can get the same looks that I'm getting or grab some images of your own. It's really up to you. Practice makes perfect. Make sure to just go wild, go creative and try and see what you can do. Once you've got a split toning preset that you really love, you can actually save that. So go over here to the preset panel hit create preset and then we're going to title it let's say purple haze and then just make sure that split toning and process version are the only ones that are checked we don't want anything else to be affected hit create and now we can apply that preset whenever we want to our images just like that okay so if this tutorial has been helpful do me a huge favor hit that like button don't forget to subscribe and please leave your comments below i'd love to hear from you especially if you have a request for a future tutorial or editing style you'd love to learn let me know and i will try and get to it all right i'll see you in the next video peace